session. Um, and this is the agenda for this talk. Uh, first of all, I will talk about some of the uh, security and reliability issues uh, in ironic uh, pre juno and pre keto releases. And then, we'll talk, uh, then I will go over some of the uh, features in uh, ironic keto and idle driver that can be used to mitigate uh, the uh, security risk and enhance the uh, reliability. Then Shu is going to take over and give a demo of those features. Um, I'd like to cap my part of the uh, presentation and discussion in 20 to 25 minutes so that I can have enough time, give enough time for Shu to complete uh, his uh, um, demo. Okay, so, um, so there's some security and reliability issues in the um, ironic, especially in the pre juno and pre keto releases. Um, so there's no uh, ironic mechanism exist uh, before to prepare a note uh, for a clean start of deployment. So uh, operator will have to manually configure the uh, bare metal node. For example, they have to configure the array configuration. They have to uh, configure the firmware settings, and they have to scrub the disk uh, before they could put a note um, into ironic for deployment. Um, and also, uh, it requires uh, um, how we the you know, manual configuration of hardware properties, uh, such as you know, uh, number of CPUs, memory size, um, and disk size. Those need to be manually configured. And those, the manual configuration process is really cumbersome and it's uh, error prone. Um, there's also no segregation of management network from data network, which Deva covered uh, in the previous session. Um, Pixie driver used TFTP and TFTP protocol itself is not secure, so all data transfer uh, will be in clear text. And also uh, TFTP will uh, encounter some of the packet loss and timeout issues when you use it in the uh, larger, larger scale uh, deployment environment. Um, there's also no validation process during the boot process, and so there's no mechanism to prevent loading of unauthorized option ROM, kernel, um, and bootloaded. Um, the good news is in um, uh, Kiro release, ironic, and a, a few features that can be used to enhance, uh, to address the issues I just uh, discussed. So um, in Kiro, ironic at the node cleaning, uh, features which can be used to prepare a node uh, from a clean start for deployment. Um, we also add the highway property introspection function. Um, so all the, uh, the highway properties such as you know, this size, memory size can be uh, configured um, by the ironic automatically. Um, the idle driver also supports a pixel uh, virtual media deployment which can be used as an alternative for uh, pixel deployment. IO driver also supports Secure Boot. And I will uh, give a brief introduction of Secure Boot and then talk about uh, Secure Boot support in IO drivers. Okay, so before I move on, I just want to give a very brief introduction of uh, IO drivers. IO drivers are ironic parking drivers uh, for HP Poland servers. Um, they integrate IO and Poland platform capabilities and so with ironic and so customer who deploy uh, bare metal on uh, Proline server that can use this driver to enhance, um, to get extra capability and enhance their uh, deployment experience. Um, these are the list of features that IO driver support. We support Pixelist virtual media deployment driver, and this is feature is uh, available since Juno. Um, we also add the UEFI boot mode support and boot mode management um, in Juno release. Um, in Kilo, we add the not cleaning. Uh, hardware and firmware property introspection, um, secure boot, and boot option. Boot option means that a uh, user can specify they want the bare metal node to be booted locally or network boot. Um, if you're interested in the more details about this idle driver, we have online document on the um, OpenStack wiki. Um, so node cleaning, um, I like to think of node cleaning as something similar to the hotel room cleaning. So when a guest check out from a hotel room, the room need to be cleaned up, and then everything need to be put back in order, and the room key need to be reset you know, before you can give, uh, give the room to uh, the second guest. And so ironic note cleaning is, uh, it does a, did a similar things uh, for 
uh, preparing a node to a ready known state, so it can be uh, um, it can be used to uh, to deploy um, or redeploy. Um, um, Kio provide a pluggable, ironic node cleaning framework. It allows vendors to plug in um, their node cleaning function into that framework. So idle driver plug in um, um, the node cleaning functions um, into this framework. So currently we support, uh, we set a system run forward setting to baseline. Um, or you can reset secure boot key to manufacturer default. And you could clean the uh, user's uh, secure boot keys. Or you could reset idle and also uh, squat the disk. Um, we are working on a great configuration and firmware update. And hopefully, those features will be landed in Liberty. Um, so for load, load cleaning, it's enabled by default, but you could disable it for whatever reason you found it disable it. It comes with a set of default priority, but the priority can be is configurable, can be changed. If you don't want any specific step of the cleaning to be performed, then you could turn that, uh, that step priority to zero, and then ironic will skip that part of the uh, no, that particular step. OK, so um, for hardware introspection, um, we work with um, upstream, and we actually contribute the uh, ironic API and CLI to do hardware introspection. Um, and currently, uh, we can discover the basic property that required by uh, bare metal scheduling, which including the uh, CPU architecture, number of CPU, memory, and disk size. Um, the ironic will automatically uh, you know, add the node property for the discover uh, hardware properties. And so user doesn't need to do manual configurations. It's easier to use and it's less error prone. Um, for idle driver, we, in addition to the, all the basic properties, uh, we, all, we discover some extra features. Um, so we, we can discover whether a node can support secure boot. Um, and we could discover, discover the uh, firmware version for system firmware and idle uh, firmware. Uh, we could also discover the server model for the bare metal node and whether the bare metal node has any GPU devices connected to it. Um, and also uh, discover the maximum link speed that this bare metal node can support. Um, the, this features, um, this property then, um, I, idle driver will automatically create the node property for this discover uh, properties. And then user can create flavors, okay, to, based on those uh, discovered node capabilities to press their workload on a bare metal node that can match their uh, security, reliability, and resource requirements. Okay, so for example, um, sorry, um, that uh, you could create a flavor with a secure boot. Uh, you could um, create a flavor with firmware version that has uh, certain hard fixes that needed by the workload. Or if your workload require a lot of uh, bandwidth, it's bandwidth uh, um, intensive, then you could uh, specify a flavor with uh, the big fat pie, like a 10G network, okay, 10G link. Um, the, we, um, the idle driver uh, did the uh, introspection out of bands, which means that it doesn't need to boot up a RAM disk and to do the discovery. So the discovery can be done anytime, uh, regardless if the OS is running or not, and it's faster because it doesn't need to who I ran this to do the discovery. Um, we, the idle driver also support virtual media deployment. Um, and if this uh, driver is used, then it will deploy uh, RAM disk and kernel. Um, it, would, it will um, deploy the uh, RAM disk and kernel uh, and through the idle virtual media over a separate management network. Um, so there's no need to use TFTP and no need to set up Pixie environment. Um, the user image is retrieved over data network, so to you know, speed up the uh, large image transfer. Um, this driver currently uses Swift, and so user need to turn on HTTPS with Swift or use a SSL proxy with a Swift so that the file upload to or download from Swift can be uh, encrypted. Uh, we are working on adding a option to uh, not using Swift, no need to use Swift. And so when the option is available, we up, we'll update that information in our, in our document wiki. Um, 
we have two kinds of uh, idle virtual media drivers. Uh, one is the idle virtual media iSCSI driver. Uh, this driver will use a, a virtual media to boot, the, to boot the ironic deploy kernel and RAM disk, and then use iSCSI to uh, provision the um, uh, user image from conductor to the bare metal node. Um, we have the idle virtual media IPA driver. Uh, same thing, you use idle virtual media to put up the IPA RAM disk and then IPA will take over to deploy uh, the, um, the user image from the bare metal node. Um, the good thing about uh, this driver is user doesn't need to pre prepare different user images. They could just use the partition image used by the Pixie driver and idle uh, virtual media driver will automatically create the ISO image from those user image, uh, from those uh, partition images. We have the this image builder um, element and also IPA tools that user can use to build the ISO image for the deploy uh, RAM disk and kernel. So uh, let me move on to secure boot. Uh, so secure boot is a UEFI standard uh, supported in, in Windows and many Linux distributions, including Red Hat, SUSE, and Ubuntu. Um, secure boot doesn't require TPM hardware. Um, and the concept of secure boot is it build a, a chain of trust and validation. So every, um, every um, boot component is signed. And the signature databases, including the DB and DVX, which I will explain next, uh, are embedded in the system. So DB is a list of uh, approved signer list. Okay, and DVX is a list of revoked list. Um, and so signature of each component um, is validated by the previous component in the chain before they are allowed to be executed. So they have to uh, meet all the requirements for the validation before they can be loaded and executed. So giving Linux as an example, um, the system firmware will uh, validate the shim. Shim is the first stage of the bootloader Typically, it's signed by uh, Microsoft uh, UEFI CA. And once the shim is validated, then the shim will validate the GWAP2, which is a, sec a second stage bootloader signed by the OS vendors. And then GWAP2 will validate the operating system signed by the OS vendor again. Um, so um, with secure boot, you can use it to prohibit uh, loading of unauthorized option ROM, kernel, uh, bootloader, and some of the Linux distro even support uh, validation of kernel modules as well. So it can be used to mitigate uh, security risk uh, from malicious firmware and OS attacks. Okay, in order to use secure boot, the program needs to be signed. And so the hash of the program will be, compute, will be computed and then it will be signed by the uh, signer's private key then the certificate and the uh, signature is attached to the program and this program become a digital signed program. Um, during validation, the hash uh, value will be calculated from the program and the signature will be decrypted using the signer's public key and those two uh, match will be checked to see whether they match. Uh, those two hash will be uh, checked against each other to see whether they match. Um, and also it will check against the uh, the approval list and the revocation list. Um, and so only after all the check and validation is uh, completed, the uh, component can be um, either denied to load or be able to load if it meets all the uh, validations. Oh, well, hold on, I'm sorry, I messed up the, uh, Slide. Let me go back to the. Okay, so um, idle drivers support a secure boot. <laughs> Thank you. So idle drivers support secure boot. Um, in order to use secure boot, uh, you first have to configure secure boot node capability onto the bare metal node. And there's two ways to do that. One is to use the uh, Highway Introspection API and CLI, and then idle driver then would 
discover the, whether this node can support secure boot, and if it does, then it will automatically configure that capability for the bare metal node. We recommend this is a, a better way to configure the secure boot node capability. Um, for whatever reason, if customer want, if user want to do a, use a CAI to manually configure the secure boot node capability, um, the CAI is also available to do that. Um, then user will have to create a favor, a Nova favor for secure boot, so that Nova can select the uh, uh, bare metal node that can support secure boot to serve the workload. Um, so, so it will. The next step is to create the. A secure boot flavor, and then you use Nova boot uh, with this flavor. Um, when the uh, secure boot flavor is specified, an idle driver will then um, switch the boot mode to EFI and enable the secure boot as needed. So there's no manual uh, pre-configuration of EFI boot mode or secure boot enablement is uh, required. Um, we also have the this image builder option. We add a option to the disk image builder uh, to create digital sign, deploy, and user images. So in summary, we recommend a uh, user to use a uh, hardware introspection to prevent the uh, no configuration errors. Uh, and then you could create a flavor based on the capability discovered by the idle driver uh, to better control where your workload want to press, what, what kind of uh, bare metal node you want your workload to press on, uh, based on the workload security, reliability, and resource requirement. Um, uh, use a node cleaning to prepare a node from a clean start uh, for deployment. Um, and also use the idle uh, virtual media, media pixie driver uh, to segregate management data network um, and use the secure boot to uh, protect your uh, system from firmware and software attack. So there's still a lot more work to be done, so you know, we hope that you could join us in Ironic Project to make Ironic bare metal provisioning more secure and more reliable. Um, and um, the, it's a demo time, so Shu is going to demo the uh, use idle driver to demo the highway introspection Idle virtual media driver with secure boot and not cleaning functions. Yeah. Yeah, hi. This is Shivarant Tendulkar here. I will be taking you through the demo part of the uh, using the Ilo iSCSI driver. I will take you through the uh, creation of the images, then creation of the node for the Ilo driver, and how do you discover the properties and then deploy a secure image. And also, I will tell you if the secure, insecure or unsigned image is used, how the deploy will, is going to fail. So this is about creation of the images. We have used uh, Ubuntu Signed, which is, provides a signed kernel and the bootloaders for uh, image creation. Here you see that it is installing the signed bootloader and signed kernel during the image creation, and it builds the ISO with those bootloader and the kernel. Similarly, the user image is created using the signed bootloader and the kernel. And this is the image that we are going to use for the secure boot deploy. So now we are uploading all these images into the glance. Uh, we upload the RAM disk ISO. We will be uploading the cloud image components like kernel and its RAM disk, and then attach those kernel and the RAM disk to the actual cloud image. So this four things completes the whatever we require to uh, images required for the deployment. So these are the kernel and the RAM disk associated with the user cloud image. So now we create a node using the iSCSI ILO driver, which is just the virtual media for the deployment.
So before uh, we initiate a deploy or any operation, we move it to the managed state so that we can discover the hardware properties that this node is providing to us. And from the managed state, we move it to the inspect state where actual out-of-band discovery gets initiated. It is inspecting and it will also create, uh, detect the uh, MAC addresses and create the ports, ironic ports for them. And also it will discover the mandatory and the additional capabilities that are available with this node. So these are the hardware properties discovered and you can see that secure boot true <coughs> is the capabilities discovered which says that this node is capable of deploying in a secure boot environment. And these are the NICs that are available on this uh, node and corresponding ironic ports are created for the same. Before we initiate, we move back the node to the provide so that the, it is becomes available for the NOVA and it is available for the provisioning. So when we move it to the available state, uh, the cleaning operations will be invoked so that node is cleaned up and all the ILO is reset and things are ready for the deployment. Now the node has come to the available state and it is available for the deployment. So before starting anything, we'll create the flavor for the secure boot deployment. So we are using some basic properties like two vCPUs, maybe 8K of RAM, and 50 gig of disk space. and some swap side. So upon creation of the flavor for providing that extra capabilities like secure boot, we need to put in the additional metadata. Here we are putting that secure boot capability and we are saying we need this to be true for the node that gets selected for the deployment. So now we have a flavor which says the node to be provisioned with the secure boot enabled. Now we use that flavor for the deployment with the user image that we just created, a signed user image. So this initiates the deployment process. The deploy ISO is attached to the virtual media CD-ROM and the node is undergoing a boot. So we use a floppy, virtual media floppy for passing the auth token and the other ironic API URL and this uh, CD-ROM contains the actual deploy ISO that is going to deploy. So the initial deploy starts in the UFI boot mode. It brings up the Grubman menu for the installation. And a node is booting using the deploy ISO. So here is it gets the DHCP IP and it uh, talks back to the Ironic with the URL. And now the actual user image is getting flashed using the iSCSI. Upon completion, it is changing the boot mode again to the UFI and turning on the secure boot on the node to on. It will reattach the boot ISO that will be used for the during the final de uh, de uh, bringing up of the user image. And the node goes for the another reboot. 
So this is the virtual media URL that has the boot ISO attached to it. So here the initial boot starts with the UFI. We are not at moved into the UFI secure boot because that will happen at a later stage wherein it has to bring up the signatures and load those signatures into ILO. So it detects, ILO has detected it and it is going for another reset and it will bring up the server now in the UFI secure boot mode. Now the server is booting in the UFI secure boot. So it is bringing up the boot partition of the user image. And now the boot has completed and we have got a login screen for the Ubuntu user image that we had given. So this is the IP that was provided to this node and it has come into the active state. So we can check the state using the Ironic CLI also and it is inactive. Also we'll check that node is pingable. So this basically completes the deploy in the UFI secure boot mode for that node. So we'll see how the cleaning happens. So we are terminating the node. This will cause the deletion of the instance. During the deletion, we are disabling the secure boot on the node so that if the next request is non-secure boot, still this node becomes available for the provisioning. And other cleaning steps are invoked on this node, which are configured as part of the node cleaning. And the node is moved back to the available state for the next provision. So we'll see what will happen if we use a user image which is not signed and turn on, try to deploy using the UFI secure boot flavor. So we are going to use the same flavor. I have pre-uploaded an unsigned image and we'll just quickly see how the deployment handles uh, unsigned image. So we are trying to launch the instance and we will be using the UFI secure boot as the flavor and we have an unsigned image. So again, it is going to go through the same process, attach the virtual media, CD-ROM and virtual media floppy with the deploy ISO and the auth token and the ironic API URLs. So the deploy has started in the UFI mode. So it is flashing the user image onto the node just as it did in the last in occurrence. And after that it is going for a reboot so it is, initially it will start in the UFI boot mode. Now the ILO has discovered that it is a secure boot, has been enabled for this node. It will try to reset the server and bring it up in the UFI secure boot mode. Now the user image is getting booted up, but the, since the kernel is not signed, it is going to show that it is unsigned and the boot is failed over here. This is the way it will not allow any unsigned images to be booted if secure boot is enabled for the node. Thank you. So, any questions about this? I don't know, I'm not able to hear you. Yeah, so the signed images are the images wherein uh, there is a shim. Shim is signed using the Microsoft certificate and then the kernel and also the shim contains the, uh, the Linux distro certificate. Like for example, Ubuntu, shim will be signed by the Microsoft and the shim will contain the canonical certificate and then the kernel is signed by the canonical certificate. So when the image starts booting up, shim is the bootloader that comes up first in that it has a Microsoft certificate 
and the ProLiant servers are preloaded with the Microsoft certificates, SUSE certificate and the Red Hat certificates, UFI certificates. It will validate those. It is one of them. It will bring up. The shim has the canonical certificate and it has been validated by ILO. So it is a chain of uh, uh, trust that will come into play. But when we have an unsigned image, that means that shim or the grub is not signed by anyone. And when it tries to bring it up, in our case, the grub was signed because I, it will use the grub from the deploy ISO and we had a signed deploy ISO, but the user image was not signed. So the grub came up, which was validated by ILO. But when it tried to bring up the kernel from the user image, which is unsigned, it did not find any signature over there. It did not find means it may be unsigned or has the signature which is not part of the shim. And, so it's, and then it says it's a invalid signature and uh, boot fails. Yeah. Any other question? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Um, am I able to sign my own images? Yes, it is possible to sign your own images, then you will have to sign the grub by yourself. There are steps to sign and uh, all the kernel components you can sign. Then you have to upload that public key of that uh, signature into the ILO, that is possible. But today we do not have the uh, automatic way or the uh, programmatic way to upload those signatures, but you can manually upload that signature and deploy. Have yeah. you resolved the problem of uh, segregating the management network uh, from the data network? So when the, uh, the, 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 the bare metal instance is provisioned, which network it is uh, provisioned on? It will be provisioned on the uh, non-management network, that is the user network. Okay. Yeah. Is there is there an isolation problem, security problem? For, for example, if you go into provide a public service provider, uh, you know, a public cloud service, then uh, you would you, you would uh, isolate, you, know, you, you would, uh, the, for multi tenant uh, service, you, you have to um, separate. Yeah, so this is a, this a work um, underway um, okay. to um, be able to assign a different VLAN yeah, for right, right. the manage, uh, ironic management mm -hmm. network and the data network. Tenant network. So that work is on, um, is work in progress. Work in progress. Okay. Yes. Oh, one more question: uh, Can this uh, bare metal instance be used just like uh, another uh, VM, saying you can join uh, a virtual subnet, or can you utilize the? Uh, it can be, you know, uh, put into uh, as a member of uh, ELB and uh, utilize other uh, L4 or to L7 network services. Are are these functionalities uh, implemented? Um, not that I'm aware of, unless okay. there's yeah. any other uh, people in the audience know the answer. But my understanding is it's ironic okay. term to use a frat network, but we're working on to uh, support VLAN from the top of switch layer, so you could segregate the uh, traffic, okay. you know, starting from the top of switch uh, network. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, no, I'll, uh, your question is, is ILO required to be pre-configured? Yes. yes, the ILO network needs to be pre-configured and when you create a node, we actually pass the ILO credentials, that is what is the administrator login and what is the administrator password and what is the ILO IP is part of the node creation itself. There's a question there. May I ask a follow-up question on security manager? Do you need a security manager? Uh, no, there is no security manager. So this is all goes into the ILO firmware. No, there is no certificate manager separately to be installed. So ILO firmware takes care of uh, all these certificates and you have to upload these uh, certificates using the ILO uh, console. Correct. So we are so uh, ILO firmware is working on providing the APIs so that we can programmatically upload these certificates into the ILO. Yeah. So probably in the next version we may be able to do that. Once it is available, we can use that in the ironic as well. Yeah. 
But for all that matter, the Linux distro images, if you are not using custom images, then you don't have to do anything. These three, three certificates are factory uploaded into the ILO about Microsoft for Red Hat and the SUSE certificates. Um, question over here. Yeah. Uh, so have you guys done any work with uh, peripheral firmware? So like, do you either design your, your nodes so that, so I don't know if you're aware of the work, but like, for instance, there's been uh, proof of concepts of key loggers being done from GPU firmware <coughs> and stuff like that, or being run on GPUs that are out of the scope of what um, measurements you can do. So have you guys either designed your nodes in order to avoid components that have, have preferred firmware, or have you found ways of verifying those? Uh, actually, I did not uh, get your question fully. So, uh, so peripherals such as GPUs or, or networks or, or hard drives carry firmware with them. And mm -hmm. it's possible for an attacker to overwrite these with malicious stuff. Um, so some examples have been uh, the, the NSA attack where they, they overwrite the, the hard drive firmware and serve up a malicious bootloader at boot. Okay. Um, have you guys done any work with ways to address that? So the ILO firmware is also assigned firmware. So HP also uploads its own signatures into the firmware. And it is one of the first thing when anybody wants to upload any, say, malicious firmware, he will not have the HP certificate to sign that firmware. But so I, I'm not talking about the, the system firmware. You're I'm talking, talking about, about option the one. So you, you're referring to option one, right? So the adapter, the storage or, adapter, or network, network adapter. Network adapters. Yes. Uh, um, so so it's, it's, it is the option one. And if the option one is signed, then Secure Boot can actually validate that signature. So you're saying Secure Boot can validate peripheral firmware, like GPUs? Uh, GPU. Because they're only connected by like a PCI bus. So I don't know that there's. I know you can, you can uh, validate the network devices as well as the storage devices. For GPU devices, I have to check. No, PCI devices, it does validate. Yes. Option, uh, the firmware validates those devices. Right. And that is the one of the thing that is uh, addressed using the UFI Secure Boot. Because you can have the rootkit installed through the PCI devices, but it gets handled as part of the UFI Secure Boot protocol itself. OK, yeah. thank you. Pardon? So a lot of good questions, but is there a, a flow documentation of how this actually would come about when it does get the certifications for these systems? So the PCI thing is uh, documented in the UFI Secure Boots pack itself, that it gets handled through the as part of the UFI Secure Boots pack. Right, but I mean, just I'm just kind of looking for a flow or, or a workflow of how it would actually get done. Oh, well no, uh, I'm not aware about that part, okay. how that handle gets okay. handled in the firmware. Because that would be good to understand. Yeah. Just yeah, in no. terms of when you provision, you're trying to put this forward, you're like, okay, well, what are I going to do next? Okay. As, well as, this, as well as the certificate management, you know, we're, we're talking about a single, but as you start to do scale, how that get, gets deployed would be good to understand okay, that, those, that, that system that comes out. Yeah, those are good input. We will uh, consider just a, just a nice little diagram. Yes. Yeah, that, that part we can do. Yeah. Yes. yeah, surely we can do. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you.